James Todd Smith, born January 14, 1968, known professionally as LL Cool J, short for Ladies Love Cool James, is an American rapper and actor that he is one of the earliest rappers to achieve commercial success, alongside fellow new school hip-hop ex Beastie Boys and Run DMC. Signed to Def Jam Recordings in 1984, LL Cool J's breakthrough came with his single, I Need a Beat, and his landmark debut album, Radio, 1985. He achieved further commercial and critical success with the albums Bigger and Deffer, 1987, Walking with a Panther, 1989, Mama Said Knock You Out, 1990, Mr. Smith, 1995, and Phenomenon, 1997. His twelfth album, Exit 13, 2008, was his last in his long-tenured deal with Def Jam. LL Cool J has appeared in numerous films, including Halloween H20, In Too Deep, Any Given Sunday, Deep Blue Sea, SW80, Mindhunters, Last Holiday, and Edison. He played NCIS Special Agent Sam Hanna in the CBS crime drama television series NCIS, Los Angeles. LL Cool J was also the host of Lip Sync Battle on Paramount Network. A two-time Grammy Award winner, LL Cool J is known for hip-hop songs such as Going Back to Cali, I'm Bad, The Boomin' System, Rock the Bells, and Mama Said Knock You Out, as well as R&B hits such as Doin' It, I Need Love, Around the Way Girl, and Hey Lover. In 2010, VH1 placed him on their 100 Greatest Artists of All Time list. In 2017, LL Cool J became the first rapper to receive the Kennedy Center Honors. In 2021, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with an award for musical excellence. Early Life and Family James Todd Smith was born on January 14, 1968, in Bayshore, New York, to Andrea Griffith, born January 19, 1946, and James Lewis Smith Jr., also known as James Nunya, according to the Chicago Tribune, as, a kid growing up middle class and Catholic in Queens, life for Smith was heartbreaking. His father shot his mother and grandfather, nearly killing them both. When four-year-old Smith found them, blood was everywhere. In 1972, Smith and his mother moved into his grandparents' home in St. Albans, Queens, where he was raised that he suffered physical and mental abuse from his mother's ex-boyfriend Roscoe. Smith began rapping at the age of 10, influenced by the hip-hop group The Treacherous Three. In 1984, 16-year-old Smith was creating demo tapes in his grandparents' home. His grandfather, a jazz saxophonist, bought him $2,000 worth of equipment, including two turntables, an audio mixer and an amplifier. During this time, Smith reconciled with his father who made amends for a lot of things by offering him guidance at the start of his music career. His mother was also supportive of his musical endeavors, using her tax refund to buy him a Korg drum machine. Smith has stated that by the time he received musical equipment from his relatives, he was already a rapper. In this neighborhood, the kids grow up in rap. It's like speaking Spanish if you grow up in an all-Spanish house. This was at the same time that NYU student Rick Rubin and promoter manager Russell Simmons founded the then-independent Def Jam label. By using the mixer he had received from his grandfather, Smith produced and mixed his own demos and sent them to various record companies throughout New York City, including Def Jam. Musical Career In the VH1 documentary Planet Rock, the story of hip-hop and the crack generation, Smith revealed that he initially called himself j -Ski, but did not want to associate his stage name with the cocaine culture, the rappers who use Ski or Blow as part of their stage name, example, Curtis Blow and Joe Ski Love, were associated with the rise of the cocaine culture, as depicted in the 1983 remake of Scarface. Under his new stage name LL Cool J, an abbreviation for Ladies Love Cool James, coined by his friend and fellow rapper Mikey D, Smith was signed by Def Jam, which led to the release of his first official record, the 12-inch single I Need a Beat, 1984. The single was a hard-hitting, streetwise b-boy song with spare beats and ballistic rhymes. Smith later discussed his search for a label, stating, I sent my demo to many different companies, but it was Def Jam where I found my home. That same year, Smith made his professional debut concert performance at Manhattan Center High School. In a later interview, LL Cool J recalled the experience, stating, They pushed the lunchroom tables together and me and my DJ, cut creator, started playing. As soon as it was over there were girls screaming and asking for autographs. Right then and there I said this is what I want to do. LL's debut single sold over 100,000 copies and helped establish both Def Jam as a label and Smith as a rapper. 
the commercial success of I Need a Beat, along with the Beastie Boys single Rock Hard, 1984, helped lead Def Jam to a distribution deal with Columbia Records the following year. 1985 to 1987, Radio Radio was released to critical acclaim, both for production innovation and LL's powerful rap, released November 18, 1985, on Def Jam recordings in the United States, Radio earned a significant amount of commercial success and sales for a hip-hop record at the time. Shortly after its release, the album sold over 500,000 copies in its first five months, eventually selling over 1 million copies by 1988, according to the Recording Industry Association of America. Radio peaked at number 6 on the Top R&B Slash Hip Hop Albums Chart and at number 46 on the Billboard 200 Albums Chart, IT entered the Top R&B Slash Hip Hop Albums Chart on December 28, 1985, and remained there for 47 weeks, while also entering the Pop Albums Chart on January 11, 1986, remaining on that chart for 38 weeks. By 1989, the album had earned platinum status from the Recording Industry Association of America, RAA, with sales exceeding 1 million copies. It had previously earned a gold certification in the United States on April 14, 1986. I Can't Live Without My Radio and Rock the Bells were singles that helped the album go platinum. It eventually reached 1,500,000 copies sold in the U.S. With the breakthrough success of his hit single I Need a Beat and the radio LP, LL Cool J became one of the early hip-hop acts to achieve mainstream success along with Curtis Blow and Run DMC gigs at larger venues were offered to LL as he would join the 1986-87 Raising Hell tour, opening for Run DMC and the Beastie Boys. Another milestone of LL's popularity was his appearance on American Bandstand as the first hip-hop act on the show, as well as an appearance on Diana Ross 1987 television special, Red Hot Rhythm and Blues. The album's success also helped in contributing to Rick Rubin's credibility and repertoire as a record producer. Radio, along with Raising Hell, 1986, and License to Ill, 1986, would form a trilogy of New York City-based, Rubin-helmed albums that helped to diversify hip-hop. Rubin's production credit on the back cover reads reduced by Rick Rubin, referring to his minimalist production style, which gave the album its stripped-down and gritty sound. This style would serve as one of Rubin's production trademarks and would have a great impact on future hip-hop productions. Rubin's early hip-hop production work, before his exit from Def Jam to Los Angeles, helped solidify his legacy as a hip-hop pioneer and establish his reputation in the music industry. 1987-1993, Breakthrough and Success LL Cool J's second album was 1987's Bigger and Deffer, which was produced by DJ Pooh and the LA Posse. This stands as one of his biggest selling career albums, having sold in excess of 2 million copies in the United States alone. IT spent 11 weeks at number one on Billboard's R&B Albums Chart. It also reached number three on the Billboard's Pop Albums Chart. The album featured the singles I'm Bad, The Revolutionary, I Need Love, LL's first number one R&B and top 40 hit, Candy, Bristol Hotel, and Go Cut Creator Go. While Bigger and Deffer, which was a big success, was produced by the LA Posse, at the time consisting of Dwayne Simon, Daryl Pierce and, according to himself the most important for crafting the sound of the LP, Bobby Bobcat Irvin, Dwayne Simon was the only one left willing to work on producing LL Cool J's third album Walking with a Panther, released in 1989, the album was a commercial success, with several charting singles, going back to Cali, which had originally been released on the 1987 movie soundtrack Less Than Zero, I'm That Type of Guy, Big Ol' Butt, and One Shot at Love. Despite commercial appeal, the album was often criticized by the hip-hop community as being too commercial and materialistic, and for focusing too much on love ballads. As a result, his audience base began to decline due to the album's bold commercial and pop aspirations, according to Billboard. The album peaked at number 6 on the Billboard 200 and was LL Cool J's second number one R&B album, where it spent five weeks. In 1990, LL released Mama Said Knock You Out, his fourth studio album. The Marley Marl produced album received critical acclaim and eventually went double platinum, selling over 2 million copies, according to the RIA. Mama said Knock You Out marked a turning point in LL Cool J's career, as he proved to critics his ability to stay relevant and hard-edged despite the misgivings of his previous album. LL won a Grammy Award for Best Rap Solo Performance in 1992 for the title track. The album's immense success propelled Mama said Knock You Out to be LL's top-selling album of his career, as of 2002, and solidified his status as a hip-hop icon. 
During this time, LL also recorded a rap solo for Michael Jackson's demo of a song called Serious Effect, which remains unreleased, but was later leaked online. 1993-2005, Continued Success and Career Prominence LL Cool J in 1999 after acting in The Hard Way in Toys, LL Cool J released 14 Shots to the Dome in March 1993. The album had four singles, How I'm Comin', Backseat, Of My Jeep, Pink Cookies in a Plastic Bag Getting Crushed by Buildings, Stand By Your Man, and guest featured Lords of the Underground on NFNO Front and Aloud. That June, the album went gold. LL Cool J starred in In the House, an NBC sitcom, before releasing his album Mr. Smith, 1995, which went on to sell over 2 million copies. Its singles included Hey Lover, Doin' It, and Loungin'. Hey Lover featured Boys Two Men and sampled Michael Jackson's The Lady in My Life. The song also earned him a Grammy Award. Another song from the album, I Shot You Remix, included debut vocal work by Foxy Brown. In 1996, Def Jam released this greatest hits package, offering a good summary of Cool J's career, from the relentless minimalism of early hits such as Rock the Bells to the smooth-talking braggadocio that followed. Classic albums, including Bigger and Deffer and Mama Said Knock You Out, are well represented here. In December 1996, his loose cover of the Rufus and Chaka Khan song Ain't Nobody was included on the Beavis and Butthead Do America soundtrack and released as a single. LL Cool J's interpretation of Ain't Nobody was particularly successful in the United Kingdom, where it topped the UK singles chart in early 1997. Later that same year, he released the album Phenomenon. The singles included Phenomenon and Father. The official second single from Phenomenon was 4, 3, 2, 1, which featured Method Man, Red Man and Master P and introduced DMX and Cannabis. LL Cool J during a 2001 performance in Germany. In 2000, LL Cool J released the album GOET, which stood for the greatest of all time. It debuted at number one on the Billboard album charts and went platinum. LL Cool J thanked Cannabis in the liner notes of the album for the inspiration. LL Cool J's next album 10 from 2002 was his ninth studio, 10th overall, including his greatest hits compilation All World, and included the singles Paradise, featuring Amory, and the number one R&B hit Love You Better, produced by the Neptunes. Later pressings of the album added the 2003 Jennifer Lopez duet, All I Have. The album reached platinum status. LL Cool J's 10th album, The Definition, was released on August 31, 2004. The album debuted at number 4 on the Billboard charts. Production came from Timbaland, Seven Aurelius, R. Kelly, and others. The lead single was the Timbaland-produced Headsprung, which peaked at number 7 on the hip-hop and R&B singles chart and number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. The second single was the Seven Aurelius, produced Hush, which peaked at number 14 on the Billboard hip-hop and R&B chart and number 26 on the Hot 100. 2006 to 2012, Exit 13 and Touring. LL Cool J's 11th album, Todd Smith, was released on April 11, 2006. It includes collaborations with 112, Genuine, Joel Santana, Tierra Mari, and Freeway. The first single was the Jermaine Dupri produced Control Myself featuring Jennifer Lopez. They shot the video for Control Myself on January 2, 2006, at Sony Studios, New York. The second video, directed by Hype Williams, was Freeze featuring Life Jennings. LL Cool J performing in Wilmington, Delaware in August 2008. In July 2006, LL Cool J announced details about his final album with Def Jam Recordings, the only label he has ever been signed to. The album is titled Exit 13. The album was originally scheduled to be executively produced by fellow Queens rapper 50 Cent Exit 13 was originally slated for a fall 2006 release, however, after a two-year delay, it was released on September 9, 2008, without 50 Cent as the executive producer. Tracks that the two worked on were leaked to the internet and some of the tracks produced with 50 made it to Exit 13. LL Cool J partnered with DJ K Slay to release a mixtape called The Return of the GOET. It was the first mixtape of his 24-year career and includes freestyling by LL Cool J in addition to other rappers giving their renditions of his songs.
A track titled Hi Hatters was leaked onto the internet on June 1, 2008. The song contains LL Cool J rapping over the instrumental to Mano's Hi Hater. He toured with Janet Jackson on her Rock With You tour, only playing in Los Angeles, Chicago, Toronto, and Kansas City. In September 2009, LL Cool J released a song about the NCIS TV series. It is a single and is available on iTunes. The new track is based on his experiences playing special agent Sam Hanna. This song is the musical interpretation of what I felt after meeting with NCIS agents, experienced Marines and Navy SEALs, LL Cool J said. It represents the collective energy in the room. I was so inspired I wrote the song on set. At South by Southwest in March 2011, LL Cool J was revealed to be Z Trip's special guest at the Red Bull THRE 3 Style Showcase. This marked the beginning of a creative collaboration between the rap and DJ superstars. The two took part in an interview with Carson Daly where they discussed their partnership. Both artists have promised future collaborations down the road, with LL Cool J calling the duo organic. One early track to feature LL's talents was Z Trip's remix of British rock act Kasabian's single Days Are Forgotten, which was named by influential DJ Zane Lowe as his hottest record in the world and received a favorable reception in both Belgium and the United Kingdom. In January 2012, the pair released the track Super Baller as a free download to celebrate the New York Giants' Super Bowl victory. The two have been touring together since 2011, with future dates planned through 2012 and beyond. 2012, Present, Authentic, Geo82 and Future Projects On October 6, 2012, LL Cool J released Ratchet, a new single from his upcoming album titled Authentic Hip Hop. Following that, on November 3, 2012, LL collaborated with Joe and the production duo Trackmasters on his second single, Take It. On February 8, 2013, it was announced that the title of LL's upcoming album would be changed from Authentic Hip Hop to Authentic, with a new release date of April 30, 2013. A new cover was also unveiled. At around the same time, it was announced that LL Cool J had collaborated with Van Halen guitarist Eddie Van Halen on two tracks on the album. On October 16, 2013, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced LL Cool J as a nominee for inclusion in 2014. In October 2014, LL announced that his 14th studio album would be called Geo82 and would be released in 2015. LL stated that the concept behind the album was to give upcoming artists an opportunity to shine and put myself in the position where I have to spit bars with some of the hardest rhymers in the game. However, the album was put on hold. LL Cool J explained the reason for it, saying, It was good, but I didn't feel like it was ready yet. On January 21, 2016, LL received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In March 2016, LL announced his retirement on social media, but quickly walked back his announcement and indicated that a new album was on the way. LL hosted the Grammy Awards show for five consecutive years, from the 54th Grammy Awards on February 12, 2012 through the 58th Grammy Awards on February 15, 2016. In October 2018, LL Cool J was nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In September 2019, it was announced that LL had re-signed to Def Jam for future album releases. His upcoming album will be produced by Q-Tip. On December 29, 2021, LL Cool J cancelled his performance at Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest 2022 after testing positive for COVID-19. LL hosted the 2022 iHeartRadio Music Awards on March 22, 2022. Acting Career While LL Cool J first appeared as a rapper in the movie Crush Groove, performing I Can't Live Without My Radio, his first acting part was a small role in a high school football movie called Wildcats that he landed the role of Captain Patrick Zevo in Barry Levinson's 1992 film Toys. From 1995 to 1999, he starred in his own television sitcom In the House. He portrayed an ex-Oakland Raiders running back who finds himself in financial difficulties and is forced to rent part of his home out to a single mother and her two children, one of whom moves out with her before the third season. In 1998, LL Cool J played security guard Ronnie in Halloween H20, the seventh movie in the Halloween franchise to die in 1999, he co-starred as Preacher, the chef in the Rennie Harlan horror-slash-comedy Deep Blue Sea that he received positive reviews for his role as Dwayne Gittins, an underworld boss nicknamed God, in In Too Deep, later that year. 
He starred as Julian Washington, a talented but selfish running back on fictional professional football team The Miami Sharks in Oliver Stone's drama Any Given Sunday. He and co-star Jamie Foxx allegedly got into a real fist fight while filming a fight scene. During the next two years, LL Cool J appeared in Rollerball, Deliver Us from Eva, S.W.A.T., and Mindhunters. In 2005, he returned to television in a guest-starring role on the Fox Medical Drama House. He portrayed a death row inmate felled by an unknown disease in an episode titled Acceptance. He appeared as Queen Latifah's love interest in the 2006 movie Last Holiday. He also guest-starred on 30 Rock in the 2007 episode The Source Awards, portraying a hip-hop producer called Ridiculous, who Tracy Jordan fears may kill him. LL Cool J appeared in Sesame Street's 39th season, introducing the word of the day unanimous in episode 4169, September 22, 2008, and performing the Edition Expedition in episode 4172, September 30, 2008. In 2009, he began starring on the CBS police procedural NCIS, Los Angeles. The show ran for 14 seasons and is a spin-off of NCIS, which itself is a spin-off of the naval legal drama JAG. LL Cool J portrayed NCIS special agent Sam Hanna, an ex-Navy SEAL who is fluent in Arabic and is an expert on West Asian culture. The series debuted in autumn of 2009, but the characters were introduced in an April 2009 crossover episode on the parent show Did I in 2013, LL received a Teen Choice Award for Choice TV Actor, action for his work on the program Did I in May 2023, following the series finale of NCIS, Los Angeles. It was announced that LL would reprise the role of Sam Hanna as a recurring guest star in the third season of NCIS, Hawaii. In December 2013, LL co-starred as a gym owner in the sports dramedy grudge match. From 2015 to 2019, LL hosted the show Lip Sync Battle that he was also cast to play Beth's father in Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, as shown in a trailer for the film, but his scenes were cut from the final product. Other Ventures LL Cool J worked behind the scenes with the mid-1980s hip-hop sportswear line troupe that he also launched a clothing line called Todd Smith, the brand produced popular urban apparel. Designs included influences from LL's lyrics and tattoos, as well as from other icons in the hip-hop community. LL Cool J has written four books, including I Make My Own Rules, 1997, an autobiography co-written with Karen Hunter. His second book was the children-oriented book called And the Winner Is. Published in 2002. In 2006, LL Cool J and his personal trainer, Dave Scooter Honig, wrote a fitness book titled The Platinum Workout. His fourth book, LL Cool J, Hip Hop Stars, was co-written in 2007 with hip-hop historian Dustin Shekel and Public Enemies Chuck D. Throughout his career, LL Cool J has started several businesses in the music industry. In 1993, he founded a music label called POG, Power of God, and formed the company Rock the Bells to produce music. On his Rock the Bells label, he had artists such as Amith, Smoke Man, Nadice, Chantel Jones, and Simone Starks. Additionally, Rock the Bells Records was responsible for the Deep Blue Sea soundtrack, which helped to promote the 1999 movie of the same name. Rufus Scola Waller also signed to the label, but was ultimately released when the label folded. LL Cool J founded and launched Boondiesla.com, a record label slash social networking site, in September 2008. The website was designed to accept music uploads from aspiring artists, primarily from the hip-hop genre, and allow the site's users to rate songs through contests, voting, and other community events. In March 2015, LL Cool J appeared in an introduction to WrestleMania 31. Influence and Honors Radio's release coincided with the growing new school scene and subculture, which also marked the beginning of hip-hop's golden age and the replacement of old-school hip-hop. This period of hip-hop was marked by the end of the disco rap stylings of old school, which had flourished prior to the mid-1980s, and the rise of a new style featuring ghetto blasters. Radio served as one of the earliest records, along with Run DMC's debut album, to combine the vocal approach of hip-hop and rapping with the musical arrangements and riffing sound of rock music, pioneering the rap-rock hybrid sound. The emerging new school scene was initially characterized by drum machine-led minimalism, often tinged with elements of rock, as well as boasts about rapping delivered in an aggressive, self-assertive style. In image as in song, the artists projected a tough, cool, street b-boy attitude. 
these elements contrasted sharply with the 1970s P-Funk and disco-influenced outfits, live bands, synthesizers and party rhymes of acts prevalent in 1984, rendering them old school. In contrast to the lengthy, jam-like form predominant throughout early hip-hop, King Tim 3, Rapper's Delight, The Breaks, new school artists tended to compose shorter songs that would be more accessible and had potential for radio play and conceive more cohesive LPs than their old-school counterparts. The style typified by LL Cool J's Radio. A leading example of the new school sound is the song I Can't Live Without My Radio, a loud, defiant declaration of public loyalty to his boom. Box, which the New York Times described as quintessential rap in its directness, immediacy and assertion of self that it was featured in the film Crush Groove, 1985, which was based on the rise of Def Jam and new school acts such as Run DMC and the Fat Boys. The energy and hardcore delivery and musical style of rapping featured on radio, as well as other new school recordings by artists such as Run DMC, Shuli D, Tila Rock and Steady B, proved to be influential to hip-hop acts of the golden age such as Boogie Down Productions and Public Enemy. The decline of the old-school form of hip-hop also led to the closing of Sugar Hill Records, one of the labels that helped contribute to early hip-hop and that, coincidentally, rejected LL's demo tape. As. The album served as an example of an expansion of hip-hop music's artistic possibilities, its commercial success and distinct sound soon led to an increase in multiracial audiences and listeners, adding to the legacy of the album and hip-hop as well. In 2017, LL Cool J became the first rapper to receive Kennedy Center honors. In 2021, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with an award for musical excellence. Personal Life Relationships Smith dated Kid Ada Jones, daughter of producer Quincy Jones, from 1992 to 1994. Marriage He married Simone Johnson in 1995. The couple met in 1987 and have four children. Simone Johnson Smith was diagnosed with chondrosarcoma, a third stage bone cancer, and was later cancer free as of 2004. She became an entrepreneur, launching a jewelry line in 2011 before becoming a born again Christian. Smith is credited for introducing his wife to singer and close friend, Mary J. Blige, in 2005 and inspiring their friendship. Both women launched another jewelry line, Sister Love, in late 2020 after announcing it two years prior. In 2023, the couple co-founded a jewelry line for men, Majesty. Ancestry In an episode of Finding Your Roots, Smith learned that his mother was adopted by Eugene Griffith and Ellen Hightower. The series genetic genealogist Cece Moore identified Smith's biological grandparents as Ethel May Jolly and Nathaniel Christie Lewis through analysis of his DNA. Smith's biological great-uncle was Hall of Fame boxer John Henry Lewis. Political involvement. In 2002, LL Cool J supported George Pataki's bid for a third term as governor of New York. In 2003, LL Cool J spoke at a U.S. Senate committee hearing on the RIA lawsuits against Americans distributing or downloading copyrighted music over peer to peer networks. He appeared to endorse the RIA's position, claiming illegal file sharing was hurting his sales and that his session musicians can't live due to the lost income. Chuck D provided an opposing viewpoint, saying free file sharing could be leveraged as a promotional tool and the industry was being overprotective of its copyright. LL also voiced his support for New York State Senator Malcolm Smith, a Democrat, during an appearance on the senator's local television show. LL worked with Smith in putting on the annual jump and ball tournament in the rapper's childhood neighborhood of St. Albans, Queens. In a February 10, 2012 televised interview with CNN host. Piers Morgan, LL Cool J expressed sympathy for President Barack Obama and ascribed negative impressions of his leadership to Republican obstruction designed to make it look like you have a coordination problem. He was quick to add that no one should assume that I'm a Democrat either. I'm an independent, you know? In his 2010 book LL Cool J's Platinum 360 Diet and Lifestyle, he included Obama in a list of people he admired, stating that the then-president had accomplished what people thought was impossible. Philanthropy LL Cool J has his own charitable foundation called Jump and Ball, which is based in his hometown of Queens, New York, and offers an athletic and team-building program for young people. He is also involved in many charitable causes for literacy, music, and arts programs for kids in schools.